Free schools. The battle to save Australia's education system. Compared to standards set by the OECD, between 2000 and 2012, Australian reading scores slipped 16%, and one in seven Australian students performed below the baseline acceptable reading standard. In 2014, around a half a million Australian students will leave school without the skills necessary to participate in an OECD economy. We're even worse in maths. Between 2000 and 2009, the number of Australian students performing below the acceptable baseline standard increased by 60%. Nearly one third of Australian students are now below the OECD baseline for writing. After inflation, Australia spends five times as much on education now than in 1964. But the average year nine student is now more than three months behind a 1964 student. Australia has increased the amount it spends on education by more than half in the last decade, yet almost all of that has been used to reduce class sizes. The average Chinese teacher spends just 12 hours a week with a class of 40 students. The average Australian teacher, 20 hours a week with a class of 23 students. With less teacher contact and greater classroom numbers, Chinese students are far outperforming Australian students. Having more teachers clearly does not mean better teaching. The average Chinese 15-year-old is 18 months ahead of his Australian counterpart in reading and science, and over two years ahead in maths. In New South Wales, there are 33,000 qualified teachers waiting for jobs in a government school, but the whole workforce is just 49,000, and only 2,000 jobs are created each year. Universities in New South Wales produce 6,000 new graduate teachers every year. Half of them want to be primary school teachers. Less than 10% are qualified to teach high school maths or science, the only areas where there are vacancies. Government and private schools actually spend relatively the same on teaching staff. Private school fees are therefore being spent on upkeep and equipment, not better teachers. The amount of education budgets now spent on government schools varies. It's over 99% in the US, 88% in Finland, 85% in Korea, and just 68% in Australia. In 2004, 40% of Victorian government schools performed above the median for independent schools, whilst 28% of independent schools performed below the median for government schools. When it comes to overcoming disadvantage, a Chinese student has a 76% chance of overcoming the disadvantage of being poor. An Australian student has just a 30% chance, and a UK student has just a 22% chance. Our system doesn't add much value, but at least it's not as bad as the UK, yet. <laughs>